Welcome to raigurkul.com. In this video, we'll discuss about defect life cycle. Generally, when we are performing a testing, this is a very important part of any software testing life cycle. So defect life cycle is a part where we are reporting a defect and based on that their status, the life cycle has been calculated. So we'll see here what is defect life cycle. It means the introductions, defect life cycle workflow, defect life cycle states, guidelines, states of defects, invalid and duplicate defects report and their advantage and disadvantages. So if you want to learn about complete software testing process, please watch my complete software play testing playlist. I will also include the playlist in description so that it will be easy for you to refer. Now, defect life cycle is a called as buff life cycle or issue life cycle where bug goes through various stages into their life where we are calculated in a year. Consider any example which contains a functionality defect. This functionality defect will be reached as an open or new category. Based on the analysis, this will move into the development state and once the development team will fix that defect, that will become a fixed defect. Then testing team will verify this defect and that will, based on the resolution, this will be closed either or if the defect is still persists, then we can call as that defect as reopen. Throughout the complete process, defect is analyzed in different stages which is a condition sorting finished in the week of getting off. There are two major people during the software development process, software developer and software tester. Developer who is developing the code or creating the functionality to be available and software testing team member who is verifying the complete functionality based on the requirement specification document or business requirement document. If the testing team will find everything is working properly, then that's good otherwise they were reporting the defect that is called as bug now defect life cycle workflow will start with the new where the new defect will be reported or created among the team either we are raising this defect into jira or rally or any other platform sometimes if organization is not following this approach generally they are creating this defect on email or into the excel sheet so they are following the excel sheet label once the defect will be raised based on the analysis any team member will go and assign it to the particular team member which will be an open state and once the development will start the developer will fix that defect and they will mark as pending retest so in few of the cases you will find these are the steps are not available this is a very descriptive method where i have created but let's say in some of the time you will find it out open fixed test and verify unclosed and reopen these are the scenarios you will find it. but this is a detailed step where the development team is or testing team is following throughout the defect life cycle so once the developer will fix that functionality defect it will move into the pending retest and once the testing team will pick that for the testing this will mark as a test if the defect is still persists then they are reopening the defect and assigning back to the open state and here in open state analysis again start it means there are two folds one with the fixed state and second one is with the duplicate rejected and deferred totally depending on the scenarios. So let's say this defect is already persist or this defect is already reported into the applications. Then this defect is marked as duplicate. If this defect is, this is not a proper defect based on the requirement, development team will reject the defect. If at any point of the time, business team will decide like they don't want to fix this defect without fixing that defect, they will move it or proceeded further so that defect is called as defer defect so or maybe they will take it into the next releases and once they will fix this defect they or 
the defect is uh, fixed and testing team will verify and then they will close it duplicate defect is automatically go, uh, go into the closed status and rejected defect is also going into the closed status so this is the complete status of defect life cycle now when we talk about the different states which i explained here i've covered into some short so formally whenever the defect will be locked that is called as new state when the bug is posted by the analyzer the lead of the analyzer induces the bug and does out the bug to the engineer group or it will assign it when it comes to the open the engineer begins breaking down and chips away at the deformity fix and when the engineer makes some fundamental code changes and confirm the changes the person in question can make bug status as fixed and based on this we can start verifying or software testing team will start verifying that certificate so these are the status now which all guidelines uh, of implementing uh, so dlc sdl new significant rules can be taken prior to the beginning of the defect life cycles so dlc is it means defect life cycle it is very important that before starting to work on the defect life cycle the whole team will clearly understand the different states of the defect where testing team will sit together and create the life cycle and based on that they will propose the solutions where the management team will also involve so defect life cycle should be properly documented to avoid any confusion in the future make sure that each individual who has been assigned any tasks related to the defect life cycle should understand his or her own responsibility clearly by the better results and it's a responsibility of the each and every team member who are following this defect tagging with the proper labels as well as defining the closure criteria or maybe if they are fixing they are tagging with the proper fix code so these are the guidelines they have to follow it even if they are fixing in which release they have to mention the release version number or release number then if they have any additional requirements said they maybe they will, they will add the comments in the comment section now what is the states of the defects a defect can be introduced at any point of the top time in the software development life cycles which might be in the initial state it means gathering informations for person responsible for reproducing the defect return state defects is rejected or asked for more information and confirmed states defect is fixed and should be tested and closed so if states are open or new states are rejected or clarification states are resolved and verification so these are the states of the defect which all invalid and duplicate defects reports so generally sometimes defects can occur not because of code but because of test environment or maybe because of understanding issues so such reports should be closed as an invalid defect in case of duplicate report one is kept and one is closed as duplicate sometimes if different team members are involved while the testing probably they will miss or report same type of defect multiple times that is also turns off with the duplicate report the test manager owns the overall defect management and process and the defect management tool cross functional team is generally responsible for managing these type of reports so which all advantages and disadvantages of defect life cycle so delivering a high quality product that is free of defects or with the box where customer will like more when we have defect free applications enhance roi by reducing the cost of development better communication is created along with satisfactory framework or team by the team and project manager defect detect the issues before and understanding what the defect trends are in the software industry which all this advantages we have in defect life cycle or dlc it takes significantly surprisingly time particularly due to the conflicting deformities various varieties of the defect life cycle should be followed and zero influence over the testing climate prompts a terrible effects on the product so that's all about dlc or defect life cycle let's recap we started with the defect life cycle process we have understand the complete step on stages of the defect life cycle then we have discussed about their 
rules which all rules we have deformity we can see and finally we have discussed about advantages and disadvantages of defect life cycles that's all from this video hope you enjoyed the content if you think so this will be useful don't forget to share within your circle thank you for watching